My name is Louis Conachero and I work for Kingston Technology. I'm the SSD product engineer. All right, well, you know, I, I think for years now, hard drives have been the main storage medium in PCs, notebooks, laptops, servers. And, and they're great, right? They're, they're fairly reliable. You know, they've been around a long time. Cost per gigabyte is really good. Uh, the way we view it, though, is that it's still the slowest link in the chain, right? CPUs have gotten faster, right? God, now we've got, you know, um, you know the, the, the latest core stuff from Intel, right? Um, you know, 12 cores, right? Um, DDR4, right? working at over 2 gigahertz. And we still have this very slow hard drive, right? And so for us, um, it, it, they're, uh, they're hard drives we don't believe are going anywhere soon. But for a performance upgrade, and I think to, you know, when, when people talk about why their computers are slow, right? It's because they don't boot quickly, right? It, the game takes too long to get into, right? It's usually latency we're talking about. And what SSDs do is really gonna solve that latency, right? There's no mechanical latency, near zero seek times, you know, if you have an SSD in your system, you know this, your system boots, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, right? Applications open up just like that. You're into your game very, very quickly. All of those things we think are, are really what kind of mark the difference between an SSD and a hard drive. The way we look at an SSD, yes, it is a storage device, but it's a performance upgrade. And we really look at it that way first. Um, you know, with, with that, again, just think, think of, you know, your, your, your everyday usage, you know, everything goes quicker with an SSD. So main difference between a hard drive and an SSD, again, is the, the storage medium, right? We know a hard drive is disk, right? And data is recorded magnetically. If you've ever opened up a hard drive, it looks like an old record player. I may be dating myself on how old I am, the fact that I know that what a record player is, but that's what it looks like. There's an actuator arm that moves back and forth across the surface. Um, you know, if you open up an SSD, what you would see is chips, chips um, that are NAND flash, essentially. And we're recording data digitally at that point really where the difference in performance, again, back to that, is that seek time. That actuator arm needs to move across the surface, right? It needs to find the data on the platter. Um, that takes time, right? A spindle motor needs to spin, all of these things. A lot of moving parts in a hard drive. You know, in SSD, there is a controller, uh, maybe some DRAM cache, and the NAND chips. And, and essentially, so when you're doing any kind of random search, right, the, 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 the data is found almost instantly, right? Um, you know, if we look at comparing hard drive performance and SSD performance, if we just looked at sequential write, for, you know, for example, hard drives aren't bad. You know, they have enough of a DRAM cache in front of them. They can sustain probably 100 to 150 megabytes a second. An SSD SATA writes at about 500 to 550 megabytes a second. So that's about a three, three and a half X performance, which is okay. But look at random performance, right? If we're talking about 4K random performance at maybe a Q depth of 32, hard drives are IOPS, you know, the, the, the input output per second are in the hundreds, and SSDs are 90,000, 100,000, right? That's when you see that delta really change. That's what makes your system boot quickly, right? That's what makes your applications open fast. If we're just doing file copying, if we're just kind of, let's say I need to copy 20 gigs of movies, right? To the hard drive, it's gonna happen. It takes a little while. And the SSD will be a little faster, actually probably about 3x faster. But to me, the, the, the big gain is in that random performance. That's really where SSDs shine. Uh, SSD form factors, right? You know, we've been in the SSD business now six years. We've been traditionally shipping two and a half inch, right? And I think it was important. A two and a half inch SATA SSD allowed all of us to get our heads around it. We, we used to tell people, it's just a hard drive with chips. It looks like a hard drive. It goes in the same socket as a hard drive. It has a SATA connection. It uses SATA data and power. It was a, a drop-in kind of plug-and-play replacement. I think now what you're seeing in the last couple years is the move to smaller form factors, to caseless designs, right? Uh, the M.2 SSD, I think, is a great product. Um, it's literally the size of a gum stick, and we're able to get the same performance that we did out of, out of our 2.5-inch drives. I think if you back up a little bit, the original SSD model was upgrade, was take the hard drive out and put in the SSD. What we're starting to see now is system builders, whether it's notebook, desktop, and server, design around new SSD form factors. So the, the Z170 motherboard, for example, we are seeing M.2 sockets now on the motherboard. So if you want an upgrade to an SSD, you don't need to buy a two and a half inch and run cables and data. Drop in a two and a half inch SSD, um, and your speed is already there, right? Your speed's there, the upgrade is easy, 
the same chipset, the same um, uh, the, the same driver set, all of that without the cables, right? And which I really like. M.2 is really really clean. Um, the other form factors like M SATA is a little bit of a smaller smaller form factor. What we see is SSDs beginning to look a lot more like memory modules. Green board, black chips, gold fingers, right? Kingston's been doing that for a long, long time. And so uh, we like that. Um, I think what else is coming is the change in interface, SATA, right? So back to back up five years, right? We needed to fit in a product in place of the hard drive. And that hard drive was a SATA two and a half inch or three and a, three and a half inch SSD. What we see now is the move to PCIe, right? PCI Express. Really the, the SATA bus kind of slowed down SSDs. It didn't allow SSDs to work as fast as they could, right? No matter if it's an SSD from us, Samsung, Intel, Micron, whoever, if it's SATA, we all work at about 500 and five, you know, 550 megabytes a second. We're not going to go any faster because the limitation of the SATA bus is 600 megabytes a second. Now with PCIe, right, Gen 2x4, 2,000 megabytes a second available bandwidth. Later on, you'll hear from us, uh, we'll, we'll be doing later next year, uh, Gen 3 and Gen 3 by 8. Now we're talking 8,000 megabytes a second uh, available bandwidth. So the change in bus and, and the change in how, where, how the data is being transported along the system is really now been kind of uncapped, right? SSDs now can become really as fast as they were intended to be. And, and we're seeing this, right? Um, so when we're talking about migration, right? Migration SSD, year over year, our sales and our units sold doubles essentially, right? I mean, we sell a lot of SSDs in a given month. And I think the reason is when we first started with SSDs in 2009, price was key, right? I mean, price was at that time almost $8 a gigabyte, right? You know, I would talk to a customer and I would tell them how great SSDs are. And we sold an 80 gig SSD at the time. And they would go, great, Lewis, how much is it? And I would say $600. You know, they said, what? You know, well, six hundred dollars. You know, I'm like, uh, that's a lot of money, right? The early adopters of SSD were corporate America. Corporate America could afford that, right? And the idea was that, look, I've got these laptops or desktops, and they've been sitting here, and they're three years old. My users are complaining on how slow they are. I can go and get a new laptop, right? I'm going to spend about a thousand dollars, right? Or I could spend maybe half of that and upgrade that laptop with an SSD, right? And basically turn the system again. Back to that, it, it's a performance upgrade, right? It, it, it makes your older system like new. Um, I don't think all of us, we all don't need a new computer. We just need to kind of maximize what we have, right? And so, you know, even with, a, with our Predator SSD, the PCI Express, we can upgrade chipsets back at Intel's 5X chipset, right? The 58 chipset. That was an old DDR2 motherboard, right? That was the first Nehalem, right? And if you've still got a system like that, and, you're, and, you, and you, maybe you want the, late, the, the latest thing. That Nehalem, even back then, that was a serious processor, right? Capable of a lot of performance. Again, the hard drive is the slowest thing in that, in that system, right? When you make that go faster, you really kind of unlock the potential of what the processor is able to do, take advantage of the memory, all of that. I think what's coming next is even a lower performing kind of SSD, right? Again, if we're thinking that what we're trying to do is improve the user experience over a hard drive, even the slowest SSDs are way, way faster than a hard drive, right? Again, not in the sequential, but the random performance. And that, that's what makes your system boot quick. That's what makes your applications open fast. It's not, not really the, the sequential part of that. And so I think what you're going to see now is, is even SSDs become a little slower, um, quite honestly. Um, I, you know, I would argue probably even our V300, which is our most popular SSD you know, ever that we've done here. We sell a, a lot of those per month. I would say for, for most of the desktop notebook use, it's almost too much SSD. It's more than, more than the consumer would need. So if we're talking enthusiasts, maybe readers of Adrenaline, you know, you know, guys are a little bit, you know, maybe doing more with Photoshop, more video, then I, I get it. You know, then I think the HyperX Savage, even the V300 are great SSDs. But you know, if your usage is internet browsing, office applications, email, Facebook, you know, all of that, yeah, you really don't need 90,000 IOPS, right? Not really for that. And I think what we're already seeing um, from some of our competitors is this kind of lower value, lower performing SSD. I think that's kind of where the market is going. I think the improvements are going to happen on the PCIe NVMe. So you're going to get like the ultra low value, low, lower performance, but good price SSD. 
and then you're going to get the NVMe screamers, right? The 300,000 IOPS and things like that. So, you know, I think what we're seeing now is SSDs and flash technology move beyond the consumer, right? Move beyond the PC and the laptop, you know, into various things. If you think about it, flash is used in some form or another in a lot of things you do. Your, um, you know, God, your, 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 your DVR, right, is probably recording the flash. Your, believe it or not, your Apple, your, your, your iPhone, your iPhone is using flash to record that medium. But when we talk about now, in, in other areas, we're starting to see it move into data center, right? That's probably the biggest growth area for SSDs, I'd say in the probably next three or four years. In terms of percentage of growth, it, it's going to be in that, that, that data center usage. So think of all the stuff that we're using now, cloud services, right? The on-demand shopping that we do, right? I mean, Amazon, how many, you know, how many hits does Amazon take a day? How many, how many, how many of us are buying products there? That user experience needs to be good, right? And, and um, you know, if we look at where Flash is and, and is moving into, and because some of these are our customers of Kingston, we're starting to see now um, SSDs move into the data center and very much more that online type of um, uh, user application, right? Yeah, essentially. Even a fast enterprise level hard drive is capable of a few hundred IOPS, right? Getting back to what we said with SSD, we're talking hundreds of thousands of IOPS, right? One SSD, in just in terms of random performance, does the work of maybe 100 hard drives, right, all in an array. And when you think about that, the 100 hard drives, how much power does it take to keep those all running, right? Um, you have to keep them cool, right? All of these things happen. You know, um, SSDs, especially in the data center, are really about doing more work with less hardware, right? If, if I can have a, a group of four SSDs doing the work of 100 hard drives, it, the price is actually better right at that point. All of this kind of happens. And so, um, yeah, I, I think, believe it or not, most of us, whether it's you know, Newegg, Amazon, Google, any of the cloud services that we use, Netflix would be another one, right? Um, chances are there is a flash array already behind there, right? That, that on-demand video, when you're able to deliver that, you know, that user experience, there's probably a flash array behind that where that medium is being stored. Com o preço dos SSDs caindo a cada ano, eles vão se popularizando mais e mais. Isso é uma excelente notícia para os gamers, que tem só a ganhar com uma unidade de armazenamento do tipo. Afinal, SSDs diminuem consideravelmente o tempo de carregamento dos jogos, fazem com que as texturas carreguem mais rápido e podem até diminuir a quantidade de travadas. Só que tem uma diferença muito importante quando você muda dos HDs para os SSDs. Afinal, os discos rígidos para usuários domésticos utilizam apenas o padrão SATA. Mas esse não é o caso dos SSDs. Unidades do tipo podem usar uma série de conectores diferentes, como PCI Express, M.2, MSATA e o próprio SATA. 